What's up timekeepers, me Time Gamer here, and today I will be breaking down for you guys what we know so far about Fallout 76. Of course, if you haven't watched Bethesda's E3 showcase, there was a lot of information given during the event and subsequent interviews and panels from team over at Bethesda. Now for some of you, there might be a lot of confusing messages from different gaming outlet videos and so forth, but I hope this video will help you decide if this game is in your wheelhouse. One of the reasons I decided to do a video on this subject was to help ease the pain for some Fallout fans that might be skeptical about the game always being online or quote, I won't buy this game because it will suck or this is not a Fallout game. I feel like with most franchise games, we also get this divide between people that want change and people that would like the copy paste of the same exact game with just minor adjustment. Even funnier to read is people saying this is the end of Fallout game because they think Bethesda will only do online games from now on. At the end of the day, we know those people will still buy the game and probably enjoy it. Now enough with this introduction and let's move on to the main course. It's all over but the cry. First off, I'll start off with an overview of Fallout 76. It takes place in West Virginia, which it was specified that it's going to be encompassing pretty much the entire state. There was even other parts of the map that weren't necessarily in the state, but they decided to put in because it would be a fun addition to the game. Another big detail they mentioned is this map is four times the size of Fallout 4. Now, of course, the map being four times bigger, it introduces six different biomes to the game, which was not necessarily the main focus of other Fallout games. If we look at one of the trailers shown in the E3 press conference, we can see the six different biomes are named Toxic Valley, The Forest, The Mire, Savage Divide, Ash Heap, and Cranberry Bog. From some of the videos I've watched, these are very specific to the region of the state itself, and can actually very relate to parts of the state. Fallout 76 also encompasses a lot of cool stuff from West Virginia, like the lore, legend, and even some of the area's military secrets. Of course, every Fallout game needs a beginning, and you start off as a Vault Dweller in Vault 76 on Reclamation Day, where the Vault finally opens after 25 years of being closed after the bombs fell. What seems to be the main general arc of the game is you must reclaim and rebuild West Virginia, and thus making you some of the first peoples inhabiting the post-apocalyptic world. Now, one of the main features that was announced that's completely different from all the other Fallout games is that Fallout 76 is always online. Now this is a very hard part that a lot of people are not able to get over because they don't want to play with other people and things like that, but I'll explain more a bit later. Of course the game being all online, it is mentioned that there will be no NPC players except robots and monsters. So every other human you find in the game will be actual players. Another detail mentioned during the conference is that servers will only have 24 to 36 people at a time, so you don't have to worry of having a hundred or thousand people playing at the same time and also having too many people in the Fallout universe wouldn't be too realistic. So like I said, the game is always online, but compared to other survival games, which this is classified more as a softcore survival game, your progress is not locked to a specific server. These are dedicated servers where your progress will transfer from one server to the other. So there will be no loss of progress. So that was one big thing that people were worried about and you definitely don't have to worry about it. It will definitely keep following you. One of the last big detail we got from the game is can be played co-op up to four players at the beginning, but they did mention that this will be adjustable in the future. But don't worry, if you like solo playing like me, that will be definitely available for you to do. As mentioned from Pete Hines in an interview with Twitch, they did mention that he plays solo all the time in this game and only rarely plays co-op with other people, and he does mention it feels exactly like a normal Fallout game. On to some of the game mechanics and enemies of the game. Of course, at the beginning, I did mention there was going to be no NPCs, so you're wondering, how am I going to get missions in this open world game? A lot of the main missions will be given from robot NPCs, and also what's mentioned in a smaller video from Bethesda is that you'll get a lot of holotapes mission, which was something that was already done in Fallout 4. Looking into the enemy aspect of the game, we will see a lot of area-specific monster based on lore, and of course, we'll get monsters that are already present in the Fallout universe, like super mutants, ghouls, mole rats, etc. Although some of you might be worried why Super Mutants the game only 25 years after the explosions, it is mentioned from Vault 87 in Fallout 3 that the first Super Mutants were introduced in 2078 out of Vault 87. Another main set of enemies that we'll find in Fallout 76 Wasteland are called the Scorch. The Scorch are a little bit more intelligent ghouls that can carry guns and things like that. It can also be easily differentiated from normal online players. Also replacing the raiders are not just an easy 
way for you to differentiate from online players. It's also that it wouldn't make sense to put raiders in the game when vaults just opened, so you wouldn't have raider gangs out there just strolling around for no reason. On to more of the game mechanics of the game, one of the new features in the game that a lot of people are worried about are nukes. Nukes are available in the game, are not necessarily available right off the bat. These are more of an end game thing you can get, either solo or from the help of other people. Now a lot of people are worried these are going to be used for griefing other players, but mention in different interviews, these are more for end game things to help you get rid of Scorch Bees, which are sort of a dragon type enemy in the game, but are rarer than other type of enemies. But also nuking creates higher level areas where you can get better loot, better crafting materials, and so on and so forth. This time around, they changed the way they did the special attributes. Instead of it being one big poster where you select different aspects of each specific skill, they're going to use what are called perk cards, which can be attributed to different skills. Of course, there will be a limit to how many you can have of these, but also you can change them anytime you want, thus creating the endless possibilities of customizing your character in an open world role playing game. Another cool feature about these perk cards is that you can exchange it with people from in your party. If one of your co op partners has a card that you don't have, you can trade it with them and thus keep the cycle going of keeping expanding on your skills. Another cool new feature they introduced, and I think this was something that was already in Fallout 2, was mutations. Of course, mutations is something that has good effects and bad effects. Mutations are only something you can get when you have a high level of radiation, and in the future can be made permanent or you can cure them if you want to get rid of them. Because there will be some mutations, the good effects will outweigh the bad effects. Another game mechanic that's introduced in Fallout 76 is a water and hunger meter. This is one of the features that would push it more towards a normal survival game. Of course, one thing you have to keep in mind is food does spoil in the game, so keep an eye out for that when you're selling your food or creating food or eating food, because there might be negative effect to your character. Another feature they're bringing back is weapon degradation, which was a feature in Fallout New Vegas. Hopefully they'll be able to do it similar to Fallout New Vegas where you can combine multiple of the same weapon to bring its stat back up to 100%. Of course another big question a lot of people were asking was about VATS. Now VATS usually in a normal Fallout game will slow down time and help you kill the enemies and just make it easier for you to kill enemies. This time around it does not slow down time but it will basically be a glorified aim assist which can be good or bad depending on the person you are but Bethesda's shooting mechanic is not always the top tier in this category, VATS will help players with the shooting aspect of the game. Hopefully this will not come too often against other players because this might be detrimental to how fast you can end another enemy. One of the last cool gaming mechanics I was able to find in all the videos and that was briefly mentioned is the possibility of creating mobile vendors in hub areas which you can take some of your items you own. The way they were talking about it, it was more like it's, gonna, it's not necessarily you that's going to be selling, more of a robot type figure that's going to be selling it. So we'll definitely keep Keep an eye out for more information on that when it becomes available. Another big feature in the game we're moving on to is base building. Hey everybody, did the news get around about a guy named Butcher Pete? Oh Pete just flew into this town and he's chopping up all the women's meat. Now instead of having stationary workshops, you'll get what they call construction assembly mobile platform or camp for short. When you're putting down camps, they will only get you smaller areas than what Fallout 4 did. Now one cool feature that they mentioned is camps can be built anywhere in the world, except important areas that are specific to quests, and you're not also not allowed to put a base at Vault 76 so for griefing purposes and stuff like that. Now you might be asking, what happens if I'm building in the same area as another person on another server? Once you build something and you log out, it will save everything you've done in your base. What it's going to do when you load into another server, it will pop it right Right back into the same position. What happens if somebody else is already there? The game will blueprint your buildings and allow you to build in anywhere else in the world. It will also allow you that if you find a better spot on the map, you can move your base there if you wanted to. So it's another cool feature that will allow you to figure out what you want to do with base building if you want to do base building. Keep in mind, you're not obligated to build base. This is only a feature in the game. You can play Nomad if you want and just wander around without necessarily stopping anywhere. Keep in mind, depending on where you build your base, you might have a bigger chance of being attacked by monsters or other players. It was mentioned in multiple interviews that your base can be easily repaired because the material is readily available. 
Of course, there's also public workshops that can be claimed by clearing out enemies and setting up there, but also, keep in mind these areas are prone to more attacks by higher leveled enemies and in bigger numbers. Of course, you're probably wondering what happens if your base gets nuked by another player, if your base is in one of those areas, is your base won't be completely destroyed, you will be able to repair your base by readily available materials. Now we'll move on to what can be called the main feature of game, and that is the online world. Crazy calls me, sure I'm crazy, crazy in love I'd say. Of course, one of my biggest worry at the beginning when they started talking about online world was microtransaction. Of course, they did mention in one of the interviews they did that there will be microtransaction in the game. They were very specific that these were going to be cosmetic only. But also, don't worry, these cosmetic items are available to be found in game. The justification for microtransaction is to maintain their fully dedicated servers and allow for future free DLC and regular updates and public events and etc. Now, with the game being online all the time and having the present other real players, there will inevitably be moments of griefing. I did mention some a bit at the beginning, but here's a little bit more details about what could happen. Of course, in the game itself, there is mechanics in place and stuff that can be adjusted in the future to make sure that you won't always get harassed by the same player over and over again. The game simply doesn't allow it. They didn't go into specifics what was going to happen in the game, but there is a couple of tools that they did mention. Like for example, there is, if someone keeps attacking repeatedly, one of the features will be griefers will have a wanted level and there will be revenge bonuses in the game. So if you kill somebody that's been killing other players, you'll get cap bonuses when you do so. Of course, one thing they mention is the nuke are not our griefing tools. Like I mentioned earlier, you can't just go around and nuke everything every single time. One thing I don't think I mentioned a bit earlier, if you did build your camp inside of a nuke area and you get killed at the same time, you will spawn close to the area, giving you easier access to the loot available in the area compared to the other person that did the nuking. Now please do keep in mind the game won't allow constant griefing like I already mentioned so I don't necessarily think this is something we're going to have to worry about like multiple other games like a Grand Theft Auto 5 where you get killed every time you turn the corner. Of course the game will feature voice chat and emotes to help communicate between other players which I think voice chat will probably be the best option here to create this ambiance in this wide open world. Of course, it was also mentioned that they are working on a 12v12 deathmatch that will help increase the events in the world itself to give players more option in the game, which you can also opt out from doing. One of the other big detail they mentioned is all players will be visible on the map. Now, I don't know how I feel about that just yet. It's something we're going to have to see how it feels in the game itself. I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to see all the players on the map, but we'll see how it works. It's a feature that they're still working on, and we'll have to see what happens at release. Now one thing you're probably wondering is a feature that I didn't mention yet was mods which is a big staple in the Fallout games. In an interview with Jeff Keighley, Todd Howard did mention that mods will be coming at a future date with the addition of private servers because you can't just add mods to an online game without other people's consent, it's just going to screw everything around so you do need private servers to do mods and like I mentioned it will be at a later date. So hopefully I was able to ease the pain. If you're wondering when the game will be coming out, it will be November 14th, 2018, which is pretty close. It's about five months away. You might be able to get your hand on the game a bit earlier in a beta test, or they call it break it early test application. There's no date so far for it, but if you pre-order the game, you will be able to get access to the beta itself. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this small little video on Fallout 76. This is definitely a game I can't wait to play. I know a lot of people have very different opinions on the game itself. I would all the things I mentioned here that I researched for almost a couple of days here a bit at a time, I'm fairly convinced I will be playing the game, enjoying the game. I already pre-ordered the game. I didn't buy the special edition because they were already out. I just, I just bought the, the basic game to get into the beta. But hopefully I was able to convince you guys and girls to at least give the game a try before you bash on it. A lot of people out there are complaining about it being online like I mentioned at the beginning. Hopefully there's enough info here to get you interested into the game to get a look at it. Like I said in the overview part of the game is Pete Hines has been playing the game solo and it says it plays incredibly solo. As long as the game doesn't go into like the division type aspect where enemies take forever to kill, uh, I mean like all enemies are almost bullet sponges or you just get a wide amount of enemies at the same time that one person can't control, which I don't think it's going to happen. They did mention a lot that there's still a, s a single player at core, that this game can be played solo and won't torture you for being solo. Of course there's going to be some parts that might be more pushing towards more multiplayer but it's always an option they were very specific on it so we'll have to see more when the game will be released 
Thank you so much guys for watching the video, hit the like button, subscribe channel, leave a comment below what you're excited for, what you're not waiting for in Fallout 76. Of course tell me what your worries are, I might not have mentioned something that you're worried about that's not going to be in there or uh, anything like that. Of course keep it nice if you say stupid comments I'm just going to delete it and nobody's going to hear your screams of pain in, <laughs> in the comments. And of course, follow me everywhere, me time gamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and right here, YouTube.com forward slash me time gamer, where I post a new video every day of the week, Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. So thank you so much guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Keep on keeping on. Yeah.